Welcome to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast. I'm Mike Pilak. I'm an actor, screenwriter, and filmmaker who's always looking to maximize my time and potential as I work to break in. In this podcast, I talk to artists of all kinds who have seen success in their fields about their process, habits, and work ethic. Today on the show is Mark Pellington. Mark is a director and producer who's worked in features, TV, and music videos. Arlington Road, The Mothman Prophecies, and Going All the Way are a few of the films he's directed. In TV, he's directed episodes of Blindspot, Cold Case, many others. He's also been prolific in music videos, directing videos by Pearl Jam, Bruce Springsteen, The Foo Fighters, Demi Lovato, Michael Jackson, John Bon Jovi, Nine Inch Nails, Alice in Chains, Public Enemy, U2, R.E.M., and many more. A couple quick things before we jump into the episode. I've talked in the past about myself working on breaking into screenwriting please check out blackoilfilms.com slash screenwriting. There you can check out some of the screenplays I've written. I have the first 10 pages of each one uploaded, but feel free to email me at theartistsworkethicpodcast at gmail.com, and I'd be happy to send you a full script if you're interested in reading. Last thing before we get into the episode, I would love anyone listening to subscribe, rate, and review the Artist's Work Ethic podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us put the show out there for more people to listen to. All right, Mark, thank you for coming on with me today. My pleasure. So your career has been expansive, crisscrossing between music videos, features, TV. How do you structure your daily life to balance your productivity and whatever whatever else you have going on in your life. There's a little backstory to that because what I do today in January of 2023, presently, in this day and age, is very different than what I did 30 years ago. I worked for MTV for six years, right, on staff as a producer, director, started as a PA. So would go to the same place every day and work, and then you would go do shoots or whatever that was. But by 1990, when I left MTV and struck out on my own as a freelance commercial director, video director, filmmaker, you know, I've been on my own ever since. I may have been hired to work on films, hired to do things, hired, but I've never worked, you know, for a company. And so having to be kind of self-sufficient, you know, I started at the beginning and just said, I'm going to keep going. I'll, I remember in 1990 getting a music video, living in a small apartment in New York and looking, getting the check and looking at my checkbook and writing like, you know, it's like, whew, thank God I got a $2,000 fee. Uh, my balance in my checkbook is $4,000, right? So you calculate, I got to pay taxes, but then you go get the next job and then you get the next job and you literally just keep going and going. So I think that kind of gig culture economy is still present. I talk to young people all the time. Hey, I want to get in the business. Like, what business do you want to get into? What do you want to do? What's your passion? You want to be a filmmaker? You want to be an editor? You want to do all these things? I'm like, the more things you could do, the better. You can do graphic design and be an AD and understand the budget and know web design and know how to shoot. Know to, like You, you got to be able to do everything if you want to you know, do a lot of different things. So it's different for a young person than it is for me back then. I personally have always loved documentary, narrative, music video, and I've been lucky enough to do it throughout my whole career. COVID kind of has put a real shift in COVID and isolation and being 60 years old and the culture changing has kind of been like, whoa, this kind of first time really in my life that I've kind of had to been able to stop and think about what do I want to do with the last remaining creative years of my life. I have a company 
that I, you know, self called prolific, which is fertile, inexhaustible. Like I've got more ideas than I've ever had in my life for movies, TV shows, art pieces, documentaries, shows, anything, things I want to make, things I want to do. The business of getting them made is the challenge. If I could get paid for having ideas and being creative and writing ideas down, that'd be no problem. It's getting them made, getting things financed, pushing them along. That's the challenge for anybody, 22-year-old to 60-year-old, no matter what your gender is, no matter what your race is, no matter what anything is. I tell assistants that leave me that are 26 years old to go strike out on their own. I'm like, we're in the same, right? We're in the same boat. We're going to be scrapping for the same tracks for videos. You know, it's like, you know, and on one level, it's a young person's game. Let's say you reach your come of age, your 20s, your 30s, and your 40s. And for every one Steven Spielberg, there's a lot of people who just like kind of like they have their period, their fertile zone. And um, so I've made a lot of stuff. I'm really proud of the stuff I made, but I've got a lot more that I'd like to. But it's not as simple as saying I want to make it. It's like, how do I get somebody to write a check for it? And I've written checks for my own movies. I've self-financed little short films and pieces. So as long as my brain is fertile, as long as my brain is creative, because within creativity lies hope. Within hope lies like, I really want to make this. And you band together with a writer or a writer and a producer or other people. Like Hope springs eternal and enthusiasm is always rampant within the fantasy and imagination of we want to make something the practicality of getting it made can be very dark. With a thick skin to just keep going. And it's a business and a culture of ultimately sticking to your guns, accepting rejection, being able to like learn from it. Let's give you an example. I'm coming to New York next week, right? I have a, two meetings with a company that I'm trying to get the final financing for on a documentary I've been making about an early MTV show buzz that I made a little cult show, but I've been working on it and self-financed up to about 25,000 of my own. But I really want to get to the next level and finish this film, be very esoteric, small, but I think a look at an early nineties, that world when analog was handing over to digital, when the world was exploding after the Berlin Wall, a TV show that was kind of presaging what the internet was. There's a lot of strands of media-centric kind of information, technology. What we were using at the time was ahead of its time. How we told stories was very different. So, you know, I want to make a documentary about that. So trying to get the funds for that is one mission working on a book trying to meet a writer for a movie like so there's uh, there might be 30 things i'm working on at any one time and i keep my list and say what am i doing today what do i need to do on that follow up with the producer about vince vaughn when are we going to find out about that next like every project has its kind of to do but i also print something out from New Year's resolutions to like not chase or beg or plead, Do you know, like, hey, checking in, somebody has a script, but like, if they don't get back to you after two or three attempts, they're ignoring you and they are not interested, which sucks, which is oftentimes rude. The business has gotten very isolated, very rude, very like people can just ghost you. And in the old days, people communicated, people got back to you. People returned emails and phone calls and sat face to face. But I think that as our culture has gotten bigger and more isolated, more fragmented, our ability to communicate has gotten dis dis disappearing as I think really fallen through. Zoom is a little bit of a technological um, substitute for that. I think the, you make an interesting point in just the the basic emails, you know, I mean, maybe this goes off onto a pet peeve of mine, but you know, I, I, there's nothing worse than sending emails into an abyss. 
in my end, I always try to, you know, reply to people timely and consider that part of my working day and just general decency, you know, for, for lack of a better word. Yeah, I put, you know, I don't know I'm going to... Like, I mean, it's again, I don't want to pay an assistant if I'm not working or bringing in something. It's like I have to look out like everybody else. Eggs are eight bucks for me, too. So everybody's got to like look at their bottom line, right? And technology and phones have made it pretty easy to keep your own schedule and do things. But I always try to get back to somebody. If they hit me up on my website, even if I put it into a separate bin and I get back to them, I can't, I could spend most of my day doing interviews and helping people with their careers. And sometimes I just can't. Sometimes I have to say, I'm just super busy and I like to give back. I like to help an actress. I just worked with and I worked with 15 years ago in a Budweiser commercial lives in Atlanta. And she has an idea for a TV show. And I'm like working on the t- spending time, trying to help her even get it to the right people. I totally want to do that. I just literally told her, I said, I can't do this for a month. Personal things, just too much, too much. Now, if I was shooting and I was going into prep on a movie, all that would just shut down, right? Because you have to be 100% focused when you're creating something. Maybe it's like, okay, keep time for my daughter. She's in college. And then put your energy into what you're making. So when I'm not actually making something or shooting something or editing something, I can can do a lot in my day. And I fill my days up. Sometimes it's writing and reading and researching. Other days, like, great, face-to-face meetings. I try to do it off days, three days off for other things I need to do. So how you spend your time, who you communicate with, how you communicate with them, how you reach goals, how you... Discipline, as you say, discipline, work, work ethic. I was talking to my brother over Christmas. And again, this has been a very not easy two years where like commercial businesses collapse, can't get arrested in that. Like, we're like, okay, so I've just got to like kind of reset. Think, where is the business now? What is the world doing? And not force myself into it, but how do I adapt? And also like, what do I want to do as an artist and as a filmmaker? It's kind of my brother and he's in real estate and just got to keep working hard. And I was like, I totally got to work hard, but it's also not in my control. If I've got four scripts out to actors or financiers, all I can do is control the work that goes out. So I'm trying to learn from that and be like, okay, that's the fifth pass on this script. What's the deal? Maybe it's not as good as I think. So how do I work harder on it? How do you, face some difficult truths. It's like anybody really, you just, you you wake up and you try and put your feet on the ground and have some gratitude for where you are. That's a big thing for me. So if my attitude is positive going into the day, I kind of give it up to, you know, allow my spiritual strength to kind of guide me through it. Then maybe force it, you know, let go and not force it and see what comes to you. I'm finding that's been very interesting. It's funny you're 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 like you're you're getting all of my questions before I even ask them. <laughs> I'm, I'm like looking down my list. I'm like, how have you dealt with rejection in your career? How do you how do you do your long term short term goal setting? And you're like you're like knocking on everything. Uh, this is great. Well, I'm 60 years old, right? And I've been through a lot of a lot of experiences, a lot of life experiences, a lot of loss. A lot of a lot of loss, a lot of life challenges, which force you to, you know, do those things. Like kind of address the questions you ask, you know, only only by doing it, you know, ask the guy who's a senior in college the different questions than the freshman in college. How do you do this? How, you're like, by the time you get to your senior year, you're like, ah, oh. and you literally come to the point and say, you know what, I don't know anything. You can't control shit. You got to look yourself in the mirror and be honest. You know when you're lying to yourself. You know when you're making excuses. You know when you're bullshitting. So that pure honesty 
is really the foundation of all things. So like, okay, great. Today is done. Tomorrow is a new day. Like today, right now, an hour into my day is a chance to make some good choices. I'm doing a perfect example. I'm read, doing thing with you, finishing a script, finishing a treatment, some notes for a treatment for a music video. Then I'm doing a interview with Tim Robbins and Jeff Bridges for a Blu-ray commentary for Arlington Road. For getting a chance for those two to talk to each other for a, for a European Blu-ray and just I'm moderating a little Q and A for a couple of, of hours, and then I'll come home and maybe do a call with a producer about a project and what our next step is. That's a pretty normal. That's a fairly normal day. And I'm not even sure what I'm doing t tomorrow. So I'm really not to think I'm not I'm trying not to think about it. Well, it sounds like organization is is a big thing for you in not really multitasking, but managing the status of different projects, different things going on all at one time. Very much so. Yeah, like I have a I have a to do list and then my just the name of the company is prolific and it just it says prolific master and I, I don't know every day I just like I kind of go through an update and yeah who do I need to call what do I need to do I send up an email I've, I've got a trip coming to New York and Boston and set some appointments put out some emails hey I'd love to see you and if if it works it works if it doesn't like I'll send one if I don't hear back I'm not going to force it Sure. So one uh, quick question. Do you find you work better during the early morning, during the day, or at night? Absolutely. Early morning. I'm asleep by 8.30, 9, 8. I mean, I like to get up early. Okay, it's 8.30 now. I got up at 5 and got a lot done. Yeah, I by, by 5, I'm done i'm toast yep that's i i'm I'll, i'm also a morning person i think the uh the army hammered that into me when i was a bit younger and now i'm i'm happy to wake up at 5 15 5 30 and get those couple hours before the the household chaos sort of begins yeah. and years of shooting did that raising kids my daughter's away now in college but i woke up every day by 6 a.m. to make her food. I'm a single dad to make her thing, take her to the bus stop. So, you know, once that's in your, as you say, it's in your body clock. Yeah, you, you're you not a, I'm, I'm, some people are up till two in the morning and get up at eight, only to need six hours sleep. Everybody needs what they need and has their own rhythm. All right. Anything that you want to plug or talk about before we wrap it up? You know, if anybody's intrigued, you know, like all my work is on my website. A couple of things that I finished recently, a re-edit of my first film, Going All the Way, that came out. We had screenings in New York, played in New York for a couple of weeks. It's playing in a few different cities now. That was really a great project to work on. A dance film that I made is going to be screening here and there and coming out. You know, they, they come out and the companies that release them do their own stuff. There's so much to wander around on my website and old work and stuff from the early days of MTV and rare stuff and podcasts and interviews and stills and my process and all the shit that I've made. So somebody can kind of wander into there and be completely entertained or whatever. See a lot of cool stuff. So, um, no, just keep keep going and talk to individuals such as yourself that, you know, I like to share the work. I like to share the words. I very rarely say, say no, unless somebody's like, just you did your thing and like, great. And like, there's just some degree of credibility, you know, that you look at and, but most people are coming from a good spirit. You know yep. what I mean? They're, they're interested. Absolutely. Well, Mark, thank you for talking with me today. Pleasure. Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, and please rate and review the show. Follow us on Instagram at The Artist's Work Ethic. 
and check out theartistsworkethic.com 